and welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm Kim Gravel, your host for tonight. Two hours, as a matter of fact, of packed, filled information about faith, family, children, great music, just about life in general. You don't want to want to miss a minute of it. Um, I, we're just going to kick it off right now. This is the most interesting musical group I think I've seen in a long, long time. Um, they, they look amazing. They sound amazing. And they're three artists in one. And I don't think I have ever honestly seen anything like that. I love their name. I'm telling you, you're going to be blessed by their music. This is the Traveling Troubadours, and they are singing for you right now. Traveling Troubadours and Laura is, we'll be talking with them a little bit later. That was Closer Than You Know. What an absolutely beautiful song. I tell you, I'm digging them. 
I really am digging them tonight. I just cannot wait to hear more from them. Right now we have got, oh, it's just kind of bittersweet to me. To honestly, what we're going to be talking about, my next guest is Chanel Swan. And we're just going to be talking, we're going to dig right in. We're just going to jump right in because I've got to say to you, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I'm so honored to have you on the show just because of the subject matter that you're bringing to us tonight. It's so heavy and deep. But so needed, so needed. You're you're an author, you're a speaker, you're an advocate for children, and we're here tonight to talk about abuse, yes, molestation, molestation. And why is that your passion, and why is that your heart? Well, first, let me say I'm honored to be here. Oh, Thank I'm so you glad you're here. Very much for no having idea. me here. Um, I'm an advocate because I once was a victim mm. um, of child sexual abuse. I was sexually abused by two people in my family family members family members and um for what that age? reason what age it, it, i would say eight was the beginning the first time i was about eight years old and um hmm. out of that experience that that has been my catalyst to do what i'm doing now that's the reason for me doing what i'm doing now and being an advocate for children well, and let me ask you something sure. it, it, are we, is sexual molestation on the rise? Are we just giving more of a voice to it now? I think we're giving more of a voice to it. It's certainly, it's still not um, being talked about as much as it should be. Mm -hmm. um, but I think now uh, people are beginning to uh, talk about it more. Um, because I meet people from all walks of life and all age groups. And um, I think, uh, in the past, it was really a taboo topic that people did not want to address. So I think that it's, you know, uh, still very prevalent. I just think people are now starting to talk about it more. But we have to be mindful that, like rape, child molestation is one of the most underreported right. crimes. Right. So only 1 to 10 percent of, uh, of crimes are ever reported. So still, largely, um, we never hear about uh, cases of child molestation. You know, so that goes to and, show and, you and how prevalent it is. Is it mostly family members that are doing this? To, I mean, you know, 90 percent of the time, it's someone that has access to the child. So it may not be a family member, but it's certainly someone who has access to the child and, built trust. and is an acquaintance of the child. Absolutely. And that is something we, we'll talk about more, too, is, is the uh, tactics that these tricky people use. I tricky. call them tricky it's people. It's the truth. And um, the tactics, and it's very important for us to talk to our children about the tactics that tricky people use because a common uh, tactic that is used by uh, predators is the affection lure, where they groom the victim and and typically that takes place sometimes for uh, over a period of days uh, months and even years mm -hmm. and oftentimes they will gain the trust and love of their victim and you know I, I've been traveling speaking and, 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 and talking to in particularly women for a long mm -hmm. time and it is shocking how many women have um, confessed this to to myself I there, though I've been I mean, 72 men year old women. men and women, 72 year old women. Yeah, 15. I mean, it knows no race. No it race. knows no boundaries. No, no, no economic status. Nothing. Nothing is. I meet people every day, men and women, who have been affected um, by sexual abuse, and it is something that we need to. Um, we really need to have an open, consistent dialogue about. Sex, child sexual abuse and sex crimes against children is really a, an epidemic. Because your, your passion is prevention. Your Absolutely. passion is education. Absolutely. That's why you've got these two books. You've got a parent-teacher abuse prevention guide and um, a child safety coloring activity yes. book, which I'm going to be taking these home. I have a oh. three-year-old and one-and-a-half-year-old. And let me just say so to you, you know. and to everybody watching, I think that is something that I could just absolutely lose my mind over and have to serve time over absolutely. if somebody hurt my children or hurt anybody's children around me. Do you know what I'm saying? I know that exactly is something, you know, the Bible clearly talks about that. Yeah. It says hurt one hair, hair on a child's head and it's, it's better to throw a mill, tie a millstone, a millstone around your neck right. and throw yourself and in the deep. into the sea. That's, that's, right. that's right. And it's just, I don't understand it. The perversion of it. It's but demonic. It's it demonic. Is. But the, it is. the weirdest thing and the most beautiful thing about the God we serve is that he loves the abuser too. Mm -hmm. 
Is that just blow your mind? Especially to you personally having experienced this. Well, because you know what? I had to forgive my abuser. What? Right. I had to do that for right. myself. And, you know, uh, before years ago, it, it, you know, it was, I was like, oh, uh, you know, I don't have an issue with him. I just kind of blocked him out of my mind because he was, he is a person who's still in my family. Still in your family. Oh, wow. To this day. Chanel. And, um, yes. And I had to forgive him for myself. And because I trust God and I know that vengeance is his and he will pay for what he did to me. He will. So it's not for me to uh, lose sleep and lose my life, um, being depressed behind what he did to me and other people in my family. He will pay for what he did to me. But our God is so good that he used something ugly and evil. Right. Beauty and, precious. That's right. And, and gave me a purpose gave me a life purpose and okay. I, I, I want to get real because there's people watching that mm -hmm. have gone through the same thing you have Chanel I mean they are they're watching uh, they might not be where you're at right. being able to use this and, and let God use this to minister to others when you were going through this as a child did you tell I did who did you tell I told um, my mother and grandmother and what w were their reactions Ironically, you know, they did not believe me. Mm. They did not believe me, and that's another common occurrence. Um, well, and it, it, I, I asked you that because I wanted to say I've heard a lot of people just kind of sweep that under the rug when they hear that from their child. Yeah, and you know what? I had to also forgive them. Mm -hmm. I was going to um, say, did, did that affect your relationship with your mom? Of course it did. Of course it did. I was very rebellious. I, for, there were years, uh, a period in my life when I did not respect my mother or my grandmother for that reason. You know, I could not understand how they would ignore such a serious allegation. Was it two family members or just one? Two. Do you think that these predators see, know who they can they do this to? Do absolutely. They? Okay. Absolutely. But see, let's give those signs. See, is it in this book? Absolutely. Uh, that's what I want to know. Absolutely. And because um, predators are so unassuming Typically, they're very likable, they're very kind, they're very unassuming people. That is how they're able to gain your trust. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't leave your children um, in the care of somebody who you just, you know, most people wouldn't, um, with someone who just has erratic behavior and just, you right. know, weird to begin with. No, but that's how, you know, they seduce the parents oftentimes, sure, too. Sure, it's, it's You know, and manipulate. Yeah. yeah, that's what they do. They're very manipulative people. And that's part of the seduction and the game that they play is it's a game of manipulation. So, you know... Like I said, at the time when I was a child, I didn't understand that. Now that I'm an adult, it forced me to have to forgive my mother and my gr grandmother, you know, because I realized that they were seduced too. They, they were being manipulated as well. You know, it still doesn't justify. No. Um, but the you know, still but applies. I had to, yeah, you know, and so I forgave them and I still forgive them and I love them dearly. However, I know that um, God allowed me to go through this so that I could. Um, be an advocate for children and so here I am doing what God has because called me to do. Because children can't speak for themselves. Children can't speak for themselves and what we need to understand is because typically it is a person that the child knows and trusts for that reason it's very hard for a child to tell on someone they care about you know or someone that they that is in their social circle it's very confusing and then these people did you chanel did you know that it was wrong when it was happening absolutely i hear that a lot i hear people saying even when they were little little four and five years old they knew that they were being violated their yeah, body there was a little betrayed voice. them so to speak there was a little voice inside and i talk about that in the book with the mm. children about listening to that inner voice mm. and, and that it's okay to listen to that inner voice um of course i, I knew that it was wrong. I knew something wasn't right and this behavior was wrong because of the way the perpetrator would um, victimize me. You know, sure. it would always be when no one else was around. So I knew there were signs I knew. It was secretive. Yeah, it was you secretive. Yeah. And I knew that it was wrong. However, I loved this person. This was somebody who had been in my life since be all my life. Right. You, know? you didn't know and life without them. No, and I loved this person and trusted this person. Well, we're going to go to music, and I want to hear more about what you're doing for your advocacy for children. And let me just say to you, the number on the screen is somewhere you can call. If you've, if you've experienced this in your life, and you have not been able to deal, or you've not had anyone to talk to about it, call the number on the screen. Call the prayer line. Um, I'm sure Chanel would love to reach out to you, and I know our prayer partners would. But right now, we're going to hear from the traveling troubadours again, and they're going to sing and uh, be blessed. Thank you. 
Changed with lightning speed But I'm stuck being the same old me Time has a way of robbing me of your memory But you can't erase it now Oh, oh. 
I am here right now uh, with Chanel Swan, and we are talking about something very serious. She's an author, she's a producer, um, but tonight we're talking about her being an advocate for children and uh, molestation, and it's just rampant. It is. It's just rampant. And, and we were talking about the books you've been privileged enough to write. And it, the amazing thing about it is it's such a um, tender topic and such a, a, a polarizing topic, mm -hmm. but yet it's something we've got to teach our children at a very young age. Absolutely, which is why I created the books. And, you know, my mindset was to create the book that I wish I had as a child. Come on. So for that reason, it took me uh, several years to create the books because I wanted to make sure that it was informative but not scary. Right. Um, and that we could teach them, and that there's a t that's why it's a two-book set, because it's not enough to just teach the child. We have to teach the child's caregiver, who is the gateway um, for the child. Mm. Um, so we have a two-book set so that we can educate the, the parent on things to look out for and ways to protect the child, right. and then also uh, teach the child, because we I certainly believe that knowledge is power, so we want to empower children to assert themselves to against voice. predators and have a voice absolutely and to and to uh, learn com uh, their body uh, awareness and, and learn guidelines and be able to confidently communicate those guidelines to others well your personal testimony Chanel you were talking about how you had two family members mm -hmm. that that uh, molested you yes. and you told Absolutely. And I love it that your books give children the voice and the opportunity and the know-how to do that. Absolutely. What happened when you told? How old were you and how long had this been going on? Give us the background. Yeah, when I told, I was about 12 years old. I told, I, I told on the first person and the family was supportive. And then that gave me the courage to tell about the second person. And when I told about the second person, I was not believed. I was told that I was a liar and a peace breaker. They believed and, you about the first one. Uh, they believed one. me about the first person. But because that person was kind of an, it was family, but more of an outside family member. Right. This, you know? was a, in, in, this person close. was somebody who was actually in the home. So um, the dynamic changed and also the, the, the response. So they ostracized me, you know, and um, I ran away from home. I was very, very angry with them. How my old family. were you at that time? I was 12. I ran away from home. And uh, I haven't been back from that day to this one. God is good. You know, he's blessed me and transformed my life in amazing ways. But um, that was certainly a very dark period in my life. And, uh, you know, I left an abusive situation and uh, went to another abusive situation. And it was just um, a serious, uh, a life-changing, life-altering sure. event, you know. What See, happened. that's what you're trying to prevent. You're, Absolutely. you're trying to prevent that 12-year-old boy, that 12-year-old girl. A few minutes. From uh, running. Know, yeah, and that's what um, pedophiles don't understand. There's something, a heinous act that takes you a few minutes can alter someone's entire life. And that's why prevention is so necessary. We don't want to wait for something to happen. We want to be proactive in preventing um, child molestation. It's just, it's just mind-blowing to sit here and talk about this in, in the context of um, uh, the Lord and forgiving and um, grace. You know what? God is good because I know, I trust with all my heart that this happened to me for a reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Had it How not, long did it take you to get here, though? I mean, very long time. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, people, people watching right now say, oh, that's just great for her. Right. And praise God for her. It wasn't and always like this. But you're saying this has been a journey. This has been a very serious journey. Um, From 12 years old. Absolutely. And I have an 18-year-old now, so that goes to show how long the journey has been. But um, I'll say that, like I say, God is good because had, it, had this not happened to me, I don't think I would be as compassionate towards other people sure. and I would be such a strong advocate um, for children had this not happened to me. So, you know, that being said, let me ask you something, Chanel. I'm okay with it. When you're looking out in a crowd, when you speak and you're talking to schools and children and, and family groups and stuff, can you tell the children that have been affected and have been touched like this? Most of the time because they always give you a look. I mean, you feel it. You don't know feel saying? it. You feel the energy. You and you feel the hug they give you, or the eye contact. So uh, most of the time, you can feel some kind of energy um, from a person who has been abused, and not just children. I meet older women, yes. older grown men, um, who have been. Because it's not just women. No, it's not just women. You know, and and it's such a child sexual abuse is such a heinous act. We have to 
do away with the shame. Do away with the fear. I was going to say, fear. was the shame attached to absolutely, you for a long time? It's absolutely, my fault. of course. I brought it on myself. Of course, because it is. You know, when someone that you love violates you, you you kind of have an out of body experience, and you feel like you let it happen. Right. But you know, you have to understand that you've been you've been seduced, and the person manipulated you, and that um, you didn't. No one asks to be abused. No. You know, so. Never ever hold yourself accountable for someone because else's through, actions. Through all this, you've you've written a play. Mm -hmm. You've mm -hmm. you, you've been able to really minister to people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, through this, you, you act, you produce, you write. Yes. What is God's plans for you in the future, Chanel? You know, I mean, is I it just limitless? It's limitless. I trust that God has called me to be a voice of the voiceless. And that's, you know, I, I, I don't know what his plan is for me. But I know that I'm, I'm accepting my calling, the calling on my life to um, help in child molestation and sexual abuse against children. That's your passion. That's my passion. I'm going to do that to my casket drops. And um, <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And we also be having a walk. We're going to have a walk coming up. I knew in that November. was coming up. Like yes. yes. Um, actually, in two weeks, November 13th, um, which is a Saturday at Piedmont Park, we're going to be holding a walk, a 5K walk, to end child exploitation. And it's actually going to be in honor of a little girl named Shania Davis. Shania is a beautiful little five-year-old girl, five. five years old, who was murdered last year in November. And she was prostituted by her mom and uh, sold into sex slavery. Uh, Shania Davis was uh, murdered and um, they found her I body. I saw that on TV. Yeah, it was a, it was a uh, nationally recognized case all over CNN. And um, her body was found November 16th. So on November 13th of this year, we're going to be in Piedmont Park walking to end child exploitation. So if there's anyone, you know, under the sound of my voice right now or watching this program today that would like to come out and join us to walk, we really urge How you to come out. How can people get a hold of you personally, people who are struggling with this? I know they can call into the station, the number you see on the screen. Call us. We will pass the information on. We'll pray with you as well. Absolutely. How can people get a hold of you? They can reach me at 404-492-0244, or they can go to the website, inchildmolestation.com. Inchildmolestation.com. Absolutely. Is that even for people who have struggled with this Absolutely. all their life? You Absolutely. Can, you can talk to them. You can, you can go, when you go to the page, my email um, address is there, and I get emails almost every day from people so yeah absolutely they can email me and uh, we can talk and, and I'm going to encourage everybody if you're watching now if you know someone who's been sexually yes. abused or if you've been sexually abused please come out and walk with us on mm -hmm. November 13th okay. I believe this is going to be a predestined day of healing for many people Mm -hmm. I really believe that. In child molestation .com. In child molestation in child com. Com. They can go there and find out all about the walk. There's a page dedicated to the walk on their website. Chanel, you've got to come back. I would love to come back. Come back and be with us. I will. I will. Uh, like I said, if you've experienced anything like this, please call us on the prayer line. Let, let us stand in the gap and pray with you and be there for you. And also, we'll pass your information on to Chanel. Thank you so much. Right now, we're going to hear the traveling troubadours sing again. Be blessed. <laughs> 